All right, this is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. And tonight we're here at the Wayfarer in beautiful Costa Mesa, California with Lindsay Troy of Deep Valley. How are you doing today, Lindsay? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. How did you come to play music in your youth? It's pretty boring, just like piano lessons when I was like four. But I definitely grew up in a musical household and it was very encouraged. I think I got like an acoustic guitar for Christmas when I was like in third or fourth grade. And my dad taught me how to play Knocking on Heaven's Door. And I was pretty excited about that. So you and your sister Anna signed with Electra in 2002 Mm -hmm. and then they sat on your record and never released it. Yeah. How did you cope with that? So basically I signed a deal with Electra Records on my 15th birthday. You know, I was wasn't really ready for that experience. I was really young. I kind of just wanted to be a kid, to be honest. So they put out like a single, but then yeah, the record name never came out. I was actually kind of relieved because I just kind of wanted to be a kid. So for me, it was fine. Is it true that you co-wrote the song Broken with Katy Perry for The Matrix? The band I was in with my sister, The Troys, we co-wrote some songs with The Matrix. And one of our singles was called uh, What Do You Do? Since our record never came out, they kind of like salvaged the song and then I think kind of changed the title and kind of gave it to Katy Perry. This was kind of before like she was the Katy Perry uh, that she is now, you know? Yeah. It was early Katy Perry. I remember those Matrix years. So tell me the story of the Crochet Club in Atwater Village that you met Julie Edwards at. Julie owned and used to own a knitting store in Atwater Village called um, The Little Knittery. I had a, a good friend who, she's German. She came and stayed with me and she was crocheting and I she was making really cool stuff. She was like selling it on eBay um, or like Etsy or something and I thought it was really cool I, I was like i don't know how to do anything like that maybe i should learn how to crochet found a knitting shop down the street from my house i met julie and she taught me a crochet class we really just hit it off we really connected we were both looking for a new musical project at that time so it's just very serendipitous why was it important for you to make music with her i work really well in a musical partnership because i did grow up doing music with my sister from a really young age and i'm also very extroverted very social in that way i like being in a room making music with other people as opposed to like working in solitude for many hours. I like to be chatty, laughing and telling stories and be with other people. An interview you did with Ernie Ball, you said you come up with ideas, but you're kind of a mess and Julie Edwards organizes the ideas that you come up with. Is that still true to this day? That is true for sure, yeah. Julie has a very organized brain. She's very creative, but she's also very organized. So that like complimented me really well. Why was it a constant fight for Deep Valley when you were signed to Island Records? We had this vision and it was very pure. In hindsight, we could have been more open, but we just didn't want it to be meddled with too early. And we felt that that's what they were trying to do. And so it was a real fight, emotionally wreaking havoc on us. That's why we decided to part ways with that label after the first record, which is a shame because I think the second record was so great. I think they really wanted to get in there in a and We weren't ready for that yet. The highlights of recording Sistrionics with producer Lars Stelfers. I love Lars. You know, it's crazy. Like, I I, we got so close with Lars. It's like almost like a summer camp thing when you're making a record with someone, you know? It's like you have this period of time with them that's very intimate and condensed and you get really close with them. And then I just like never see him anymore. I mean, I, I could still call him up, but uh, I just love him and I miss him. He's a great guy. Why do you think that the UK instantly embraced Deep Valley's debut single, Gonna Make My Own Money? I don't know. Do you want like the boring answer? I mean, we had a British manager and he was very like in the rock and roll world. I don't know. I think there is more of a culture of rock and roll there. I mean, obviously things are different now, like 10 years in. The first seven inch we ever put out was on an independent label over there called Arc Recordings. And then our primary record label was Island. So then like we had like an American label, but it was, they weren't as engaged. It was like, we signed the deal over there. NME were really supportive, you know, NME magazine and a lot of the indie music magazines and blogs over there were, were really supportive early on. It's just smaller, you know, it's easier, I feel like, to get something going in the UK. The radio is just different here, you know, there it's like the BBC radio and it's all a bit more condensed. How did Yeah Yeah Yeah's guitarist Nick Zinner help the progression of the Deep Valley sound when he produced your second album, Femagism? Nick was really the perfect person for us to work with because the core Yeah Yeah Yeah's members are like Nick, Brian and Karen. Mm -hmm. So it's like guitar, drums and vocals, which is basically what Deep Valley is. 
So he understood that structure really well and also just like loves that type of music. And I'm a massive Yeah Yeah's fan. I mean, they were one of the biggest influences on me musically. It was like a dream come true for me and for him, he like loved our band and uh, we got along really well. I think he taught us some really great tricks as far as like writing goes. We did a lot of writing in the studio or writing in front of him in real time, which was really nerve wracking at first for me. I didn't want to like make a fool of myself but he's just such a down to earth cool guy and it made us feel really comfortable and it ended up being a really great exercise for us. Georgia Mae Jagger was the featured model in the Royal Jelly video. Yes. Okay, and Nick makes a little appearance in there yes, too. Yes, he does, very good. Yeah, Georgia Jagger is a good friend of mine and I love her. She's rock and roll royalty, you know, mm -hmm. but she's just so lovely and kind and I've stayed at her house before and she would like put us up in London when we would tour there. Uh, she has a house there. We met through like some mutual friends and she was just so lovely and a big fan, super supportive. So I had asked her to be in our video and she was super excited about it because it was something different for her, you know, more like a passion project thing. What does that relationship look like? We go through phases of seeing each other more because she travels a lot, so she's very busy, can't get a hold of her. But then when like when we're in the same city and we both have free time, then sometimes we'll spend a lot of time together. It's like one of those relationships. Sometimes she's just like off the grid. Where does your rebellious spirit come from? Oh my God. I don't know, probably from my dad. Like my dad, like rebelling against him, I think. Because mm. him and I would kind of go at it, like butt heads, like a bit of a power struggle. He's just a character. He's a character and I think if he was trying to be like kind of like patriarch man of the house, like it would like really rub me the wrong way and I would rebel against it and then I would be like really bratty and I don't know. I just think that I rebelled against him and his attitude but I also think like me doing like playing like heavy rock and roll was a good rebellion because I mean I was definitely like pushed to do music from a young age which I you know have mixed feelings about but it was always like people trying to get me to sing these folk songs or very like feminine music so it's like it was fun to kind of just do something completely opposite yeah. of that why was it important for you to release two eps digital dream and american cockroach i think we just had a lot of music like too much to fit on one record instead of making a double record we did the eps and then the the record but i would love one day to i mean we only release them digitally it would be cool if we could release them physically as well mm -hmm. because I really love the EPs also. Unfortunately, there's this like crazy like delay happening worldwide with vinyl, which is really annoying because our, our vinyl is delayed. What was the best part of Deep Valley recording cover versions of the Flock of Seagulls 1981 hit, a space age love song, and the X-Ray Specs 1978 punk song Obsessed With You for the 2020 Valley Girl film remake soundtrack? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was super fun. Um, I'm a big fan of the movie Valley Girl. I used to watch it a lot with my friends. So when we got to be in the remake, that was really exciting for us. Yeah, it was really fun covering those songs. We've done a handful of covers, but not that many. So it is always a fun challenge. And we also got to work with like a really legendary producer, Harvey Mason Jr. for that. And then we got to be on screen, which was like crazy cool I got to like live out a little actress fantasy there which was fun get like hair and makeup and everything and the director of the movie she's super rad Rachel Lee Goldberg it's a great experience did you play as the band in the movie yeah kind of like Josie Cotton yes or the plimsolls yes okay. like the plimsolls yeah what's your favorite scene in the original Valley Girl movie oh my god when Nick Cage and his friend go to the party and then they get kicked out. And then Julie is the character. She's like looking at him through the, the blinds and he goes, that Julie is truly dazzling. And I just think it's so funny. There's just so many like good kind of corny lines in that movie that are just so classic. It's like tripendicular, you know? It is, it really is. <laughs> what do you remember about Debbie Harry doing your makeup when Deep Valley opened for Blondie on tour? That was like a bucket list moment for me. How did it Happen. I'm really good at making things happen. Okay. I just asked her if she would and she was like, oh. sure. And it was super fun. But I think I had this fantasy that at the end of it, I would look in the mirror and I would look like Debbie Harry. And I still was like looked like myself, but with like more makeup on. The first night she did it, it was like kind of crazy, like really experimental and weird. And then the second night I think was a bit more glamorous. We have very different eye shapes. Mm -hmm. So she has to do like stuff differently on me because mm -hmm. what she would do for herself wouldn't 
necessarily work. She told me she used to just like get stoned when she was younger and just practice doing her makeup for hours and like have fun with it and get really experimental and crazy. I mean, that's why she must be so good at it because she spent a lot of hours just like experimenting and doing that. You know, I never really did that. The highlights of the hippie shake behind the scene LA photo shoot with Courtney Love, Lana Del Rey, bassist Jenny V, and Frankie and the Studs leader Frankie Clark. That room was exceptional. The clothes were exceptional. Everyone was such a pro on that photo shoot. So many great photos came out of it. I know that you collaborated with Jenny V. The videos of you recording in the cave studio, she seems so excited about everything. Looks like it was really fun. Her bass tone is incredible. That yeah. distortion yeah. bass. What did you take away? Did you know Frankie Clark? So I ended up meeting her at that photo shoot and then her band Frankie and the Studs just opened for us at the Roxy. So that's how that connection was made. And Jenny had known her before. What happened on the set? Anything special? I think it was just like such a groovy, cool room and there was a lot of cool props. So we were just all having a lot of fun with it. What inspired the title of your recent album, Marriage? Well, the simple answer is that like, we always said that being in a band was like being in a marriage. You know, especially like being in a two piece, uh, even more so. I thought it was cool to do like a very kind of like simple, very like iconic album title since the last one had been like a lot more playful. So, yeah, band marriage. Speaking of band marriage, where is Julie Edwards on this tour? Julie's just got a lot going on now. She's got a small child mm. and it's just kind of too early for her to, to go out on the road right now. This isn't the first tour we've done where she's kind of been on maternity leave. When she was pregnant with her first kid, and shortly thereafter, we did a couple tours where Leah Roswell, who's playing with us on this tour, she filled in, in for Julie years ago. So it's been really nice getting to reconnect with Leah. And Leah is such an incredible drummer and a wonderful person. So it's been really fun having her along. How has being a mother changed your life and your perception of reality? It changes everything. Your children become your whole world, you know? Mm -hmm they can become the most important thing. It makes like the bullshit I used to care about, like I don't care about any of that anymore because I have my daughter and to ground me. That's a beautiful thing. And how does that work with you being on tour? Well, it is a challenge. I try to do like shorter little tours, like this tour, my mom came down and helped with my daughter. Right now it's just like the Southern California portion. So I can kind of just get away from the, for the night and come back. But yeah, no, I mean, it definitely is like a, a challenge to figure out for sure. And I do like miss her, you know, but it's been fun for me to like fall in love with performing all over again because I think I had kind of forgotten how much I loved it because like the whole COVID like hiatus it was a long time you know and I just kind of had felt really disconnected from music so me reconnecting and falling in love with it all over again has been really special for me and especially like with Leah like bringing that fresh energy to the band like a newness playing with her it's been really fun. What was it like for you guys to open for Marilyn Manson in 2015? So fun. They were massive rock shows and we're a rock band they're rock fans mm -hmm. so we made so many new fans on that tour he was cool to you um yeah what inspired the lyrics to the songs off the marriage album let's start off with perfection d valley's really into like puns mm -hmm. portmanteaus i definitely could never achieve perfect like i'm way too fucking just scatterbrained and like mm -hmm. messy but i think i've got a lot of spice and i've got you know a lot of talent that definitely defines what i am personally perfection and i think d valley embodies that as well it's very romeo void you totally go into that romeo void voice in that song billions billions is kind of like a jack white inspired riff really beefy and bluesy rock and roll inspired by the one percenters of the world that's like the dream right to be like to have like the private jet kind of that kind of poking fun at it do you really feel like you're in a place where a billion dollars would help you god i don't know i once bought a lottery ticket and then i started fantasizing about winning and trying to figure out what i would do with the money and i started getting really stressed because i couldn't decide what to spend the money on and how to split it up and so i was already so stressed about it before i'd even like and i didn't i mean i didn't win so I don't know. I like crime. Uh, the, I believe the lyrics have nothing to do with the music video. Mm -hmm. I believe they're two separate ideas. So what is the real message behind I like crime? Well, it's a bit political, actually. It was sort of written from the perspective of if you were to live in a country where being gay is punishable by death, it's written from like a gay person's perspective. What's next for you? I wrap up this tour. So tonight and then we have San Diego coming up, which is actually my hometown where I'm from. From originally then we're gonna be touring with the violent femmes mm. in May which is very exciting because I'm a massive fan how would you rate this interview from 1 to a 10 10 okay all right high five me sister <laughs> boop, boop. the blaring out show